Before we can talk about quantum mechanics, we have to talk about a little bit of physics, and um, we're going to talk about light and what light is. Because the interaction of light with atoms is what helped scientists to understand what um, was going on with the atoms. So light is a form of electromagnetic radiation. It's a type of energy. Light is not matter. We define matter as something that occupies space um, and has mass. Light doesn't have mass. Um, so light is not matter. It's a type of energy. Light travels at a constant speed, 3.0 times 10 to the 8th meters per second. That probably doesn't mean much to you. That's 186,000 miles per second. Is that fast? Yeah, that's really fast. It's much faster than the speed of sound. We call this speed the speed of light because light travels at this speed. So that's light speed. This is, uh, it travels so quickly, it, you see lightning and then later you hear the thunder because sound travels much slower. You see the, the flash of fireworks and then you hear the boom after. What we need to understand um, that has to do with quantum mechanics is that light has properties of both waves and particles. Light has um, been understood as a wave for quite a while, but this idea of light being a particle is something that came in with uh, quantum mechanics. So let's think about the wave nature of light. We can't see the waves of light, but we see waves in other situations. If we drop water into a still surface of water, we see the effect, we see that waves are created and those waves travel out in an increasingly large circle, right? They radiate outward from where they were formed. These waves are carrying energy. And if you don't think of, if, you, if that bothers you to think of a, a wave of water carrying energy, go to the coast and stand knee deep in the surf. And though, as those waves come and crash over you, you'll realize, yeah, there's a lot of energy in those waves. They'll knock you down if you're not careful. Well, we can characterize waves. One important characteristic is the wavelength. So here we have an illustration of a wave. This is the sine wave, and this is the sort of wave that um, the electromagnetic radiation is. The wavelength is the length of the wave. It's from one peak or crest to another crest. You could measure it from trough to trough, <coughs> or you could measure it from this node. We have to skip that one to this node. It's the length of a wave. And how long that wave is affects how it behaves and how we perceive it. Remember, all light travels at the same speed. For visible light, that part of the electromagnetic spectrum that we can see, our eyes perceive <coughs> different wavelengths as different colors. If we take a light source such as an incandescent light bulb or the light from the sun, pass it through a slit and then through a prism, we can separate it according to its wavelengths. And it will always separate into the same order of colors. Um, it's helpful to know those colors for nothing else so that you can draw a decent rainbow. Um, I, don't, I don't know how much experience you have with children's artwork, but I have six kids. I've seen a lot of children's artwork. And sometimes you look at their rainbow and you're like, well, yeah, it's an arc and it's got all those colors, but there's something wrong with it. What's wrong? Oh, the colors are out of order because young children don't really think about stuff like that. So it's red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet. And uh, the way I was taught to remember that was Roy G. Biv, like some, somebody's strange name. Roy G. Biv, red, orange, green, yellow, blue, indigo, violet. Not ever really come to terms with exactly what indigo is. It looks like blue to me, and this blue looks like teal, but whatever, right? We can separate the light 
based on its wavelength. And that has to do with the interaction of the light with this prism. As it goes from one surface to another, it gets bent. And uh, different wavelengths bend in different ways, and so it gets separated. And this is exactly how rainbows form. It's just little droplets of water are causing this separation according to the wavelength of the light. Where did my... What? It doesn't want to let me advance the slide. Sorry, but I'm going to go on. No, I don't. Okay, I'll see. Okay, sorry. I'm just arguing with my devices. So, how do we perceive color? Um, here we have a, an illust a picture of a woman standing at the ocean, and she's wearing a red shirt. Why is that red? It's red because it's absorbing many of the wavelengths of light, and it's reflecting the red light. So the white light from the sun that contains all of the wavelengths, much of that's being absorbed by her shirt. The red light is being reflected and comes to our eyes. And that causes a molecular rearrangement in your eyeball that your brain perceives as the color red. If, if you ever just want to like make your head explode, sit around and think about what is vision? Really? You know, just think about that for a while. It'll just kind of make you crazy. It'll make doing chemistry homework seem like a piece of cake. So we, we perceive different wavelengths as different colors. Um, another important thing is frequency. Um, let me go back here really quick. The symbol we use for wavelength is the Greek letter lambda. It's like an upside down Y. That's lambda. And for frequency, that looks like a V. It's actually the Greek letter nu. Um, it's kind of a, a curvy V. So when I draw it, I, I make the hmm, like this, and then this part's bent as opposed to a V. You're like, yeah, those don't look that much different. No, no they don't. But anyway, there it is. Frequency is the number of cycles or the number of wave crests that pass through a stationary point in one second. It's cycles per second. So why is there this big blank spot down here? This is for me to draw a stupid picture. So here is a person. And there's, a, there's waves coming. Let's think about ocean waves. So here we have ocean waves coming. And our little person here is going to count how many waves crash into him in a second. Now, if you've been to the ocean, you realize it's, it's going to be like less than one, right? Because there's some space in between. So for this purpose, maybe we'll say how many waves crash into him in five minutes. You count them. Well, here comes one. Here comes another. Here comes another. That is the frequency of the waves. For light, it's the number of crests that pass a given point in a second. All light travels at the same speed. So if I draw a wave that's like this, and these two waves are traveling at the same rate of speed, which one is going to crash into him more frequently? The, the top one, right? Because if this is how much could pass in, let's just say that what I've drawn here, this would pass him in a second. So that would be this, this one we'll say is the starting point. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven crests pass in a second. So that would be seven per second. This one would be one, two, three, lower frequency. There's a relationship between the wavelength, this is the wavelength, and the frequency. So this one on the top is high frequency. And this one on the bottom is low frequency. Which one has the longer wavelength? The one on the bottom or the top? The bottom. The bottom. This is the, the wavelength, lambda. 
So this is longer wavelength, and the one on the top is shorter wavelength. They're inverse. If the wavelength is long, then the frequency is short. It passes more frequently. Any questions? So light behaves like a wave. Light can also be viewed as a stream of particles. And you've probably heard of photons, right? Where have you heard about photons? In reference to photon torpedoes, right? Fire the photon torpedoes, they're getting too close, right? Photons are pieces of light. They're pieces of energy, packets, individual packets of energy. Is that kind of hard to get around? A piece of light? How can you have a piece of light? That's like, I'll have two pieces of milk, please. <laughs> Doesn't make any sense. But you can have a piece of light, a packet of light. We call it a photon. So light sometimes acts like a stream of particles. And there were experiments and things, but we're not going to go into those. Um, what we find is that the amount of energy that's carried by that packet of light depends on the wavelength of the light. If it has a shorter wavelength, it has greater energy. Well, let's think about standing at the ocean. If the waves are coming in at the same speed, they're, they're moving through the water at the same speed, but you have something with a short wavelength, then the frequency is high, it's going to crash into you more often, right? That's higher energy. The light waves carry more energy if their crests are closer together. So higher frequency, shorter wavelength equals higher energy. There's, there's all kinds of calculations that can be done with energy of light and stuff. What I want you to grasp is just the general relationships between frequency, wavelength, and energy. So one of the things I think about is if I draw a wave like this, and I draw a wave like this. Now this isn't exactly scientific, but it helps me, so maybe it'll help you. Which one of those looks more energetic? The first one. This one looks like it's all over the place. It's just jittery too much caffeine, right? And this one's like just barely rolling on a bed. <laughs> Low energy, right? <coughs> this has a long wavelength which means it has a low frequency and low energy. This has a short wavelength, high frequency, high energy. Okay? So here's the whole electromagnetic spectrum, and this is another section, so I need to stop here.